well, we've got a lot to talk about today, Mick. I want to talk to you about a bunch of things that have been on my mind. What's up, Charity Morgison? Charity Morgison said, what's up? Cat Reed said, what's up? Um, shows, by the way, dude, have been incredible, man. The shows have been nuts. Cat Reed says she's not mad at all at all the sexiness on her feed right now. She's clearly talking about me and Cat. You're welcome, baby. Now. So I want to talk to you, Mick, about a couple things that have been on my mind here, man. I want to talk to you about the Ruslan interview that we did and, um, you know, the reaction that it's gotten. I want to talk to you about some of the reaction on the Eva Lovia uh, interview that we did. Um, sure. I want to talk. I want to talk about um, Enzo Amori, which was supposed to come out today, but is not. I want to talk to you about Cobra Tate, a fellow fighter like yourself. Then I want to talk about uh, you're big into health food and uh, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab and the global elites who have completely taken over our life are destined, destined to make us eat bugs. It's not a matter of of if we will eat bugs, it is a matter of when we will eat the bugs. But first, all right. So let's let's start off with that. Let's start off with that. Okay. Let's start off with that because I know you you don't fuck with the World Economic Forum. No. And I know uh, 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 it's incredibly comfortable. Now, what is this? This looks like I could make cocoa with this. What is right? What is that? Well. Uh, that's an insect-based premium protein. It's made from Molitor, which is mealworm larvae. Uh, the company is called Insect. This is Infras. Ace Finn wants to know, is Downey a libtard? I don't know if Downey's a libtard, but I do know that he is doing uh, the EU's... Hey, I was about to talk about bugs. Yeah, go for it. That's what it was. Robert Downey Jr. was on Colbert trying to sell us bug protein powder. That's what the clip was uh, about. As I was as I was saying until I was so rudely interrupted by Robert Downey Jr. I know you don't like the World Economic Forum, and I got a feeling you don't really like bugs. Just like as like a species or as food. Am I correct in both of those assumptions? Yeah, I hate I hate the World Economic Forum. And um, bugs are bugs gross me out to no end. And you say the Schwa Klaus Klaus guy is the biggest like super villain in the in the world, kind of that no one knows Pretty about. Much. He is a Bond villain. Okay. Um, I am not mad at bugs being put in our food. Like, if they like crickets and whatever. I don't know. Robert Downey Jr. is talking about mealworms or something. Look, that's like that type of protein has sustained like like a lot of like like Asian countries for years. Like they eat bugs and like, like cricket protein and different types of stuff like that is good for you. It's like, you know, it's almost like a combination or it's like almost like a happy medium between meat and like, uh, like what is it? Like plant protein. You know what? Does that make sense to you a little bit? You with me so far? I guess. Um, all right. I have an issue with what's been going on is putting plastics and f bullshit fillers in our food because like that, what? that's where capitalism goes wrong to save a buck feeding like our, they're feeding their own children shit. Like that's actually that shit I have a problem with. Are you still there, Gerard? So I'm only looking at me now. I hate this. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, th this is uh, – look, we're experimenting. With Why the, the one time I talked, all the fucking snafus happen? <laughs> it's, uh, it's you a set this up, you son of a bitch. I did. I did. We may, uh, we may have to restart. You're the, you're the other Bond villain. You and Klaus Schwab over here. That's why I don't like them. There could be only one. Saboteurs. Oh, okay, yeah. You don't like what you – yeah, you see yourself in them. All right, so here's the thing, right? You Wait, did you hear my point? I did, and I liked it. I, I don't. You're gonna have to be specific about what what plastics they're putting in the foods, though. There's people like our age, like people in their like 20s and 30s, coming down with like ass cancer because of all the plastics they consume. Because it's just like it's like stuck. It's stuck in the food as fillers. You can look the shit up. It's stuck in the food as fillers, or it's coming off of like like these mass produced things. I I, I assume they're also like. All the packaging, like take a like a freaking candy bar sitting there melting in the sun, you know what I mean? Like 
getting yeah, yeah. classic in it that way. Like there's so much like bad shit that crickets and bugs are the least of my worries. That shit's actually nutritious. I don't like I don't like the plastics. I don't like the bullshit oils. Give me some fucking bugs. I'm cool with eating some. That's some good protein. I got no problem with that. But uh, you have no problem with with you know. Don't you feel like they're trying to get us to accept a lower quality of life? Like we're going from animal proteins to bugs, you know, to stuff that rolls around and shit all day, you know, to you know they don't want us to to have air conditioners. They don't want us to have cars. They like. You know, we're we're being conditioned to accept a lowered standard of living. We're being conditioned to like, hey, just sit in a mud hut and eat bugs off of piles of shit all day because that's what's best for the environment. No, I, I don't, I don't think that that's true because I don't think that they're going to be doing it. I don't think that they're going to be sitting. These billionaires in the World Economic Forum are going to be sitting in mud huts, sweating their ass off with no air conditioning, you know, and and eating cockroach uh, tapioca like the rest of us will. Because they don't do the stuff that they do right now. They they take private jets. They fly private to billionaire conference in Davos where they eat freaking carpaccio and sushi all day long only to tell us how us, uh, you know, the rest of us are ruining the world for them. So uh, I don't know, man. Look, there, there's a certain amount of bias to this. There's a certain amount of there's a certain amount of cognitive bias with this like you know i, I get grossed out when people have escar go i have escar go and i'm like dude it's gross so i look sure escar go is dope that's gross bro and it's delicious also, it's you can drown anything in garlic butter and it'll taste good that might be the bad that you 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 pack roaches and throw them in uh, i mean rocco from episode three, people that remember the CEO of Fun Rocco loves chocolate covered uh, crickets. Loves it. He lived in Mexico for a while and fell in love with those fried crickets that go covered in chocolate. How about you just give me the chocolate? I mean, you say there's cricket parts and beetle parts and roast in ground up coffee. They say it's the most buggy thing in the world. And I drink like four cups a day. So who knows, man? I just don't like that it's kind of being our throat. And it's going to be new. They're already, like, rolling out, like, uh, cricket flour. I don't know how you do that. But, like, you're going to have pizza made with cricket flour. And it's going to have, like, high protein and all Brother, that I've had I've had cricket. Uh, I've had, like, cricket protein powder and stuff like that. I've had cricket cookies. I've had that shit before. That shit. You've like, had cricket cookies? That's, like, at least they're not poisoning us. I get where you're coming from. And they're, you're saying, like, a, like, uh, a less lesser quality of life. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. But at least they're not poisoning us. At least they're not feeding us shit like worse than shit, garbage, crap. I don't know you if know that's I mean? true that's though. Give us cancer and huh? I don't know if that's true though. Because where 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 do you find bugs? Yeah, it's gonna be some fucking GMO bugs. crickets that are like. No, you, you know what I mean? Well, first of all, if you don't think that they're going to try to figure out a way to maximize the profitability of bugs, you're nuts. But no, nah, yeah, number true. Number like, two look, is, I'm, where do you find bugs, Mick? Where do you find bugs? Uh, in find trees? Bugs in I don't filth. know. You, they, in filth, in rotted stuff, and things that are that are dying. I don't know enough about bugs. I don't know enough. But I am at a, at a place where I am 100% untrustworthy of the science. So I, I, they tell you it's healthy? Fine. You know, I you're the guy that got me to stop eating uh, fast food, and I'm you know I'm all the better for it. But you know, it, it makes a lot of sense with the preservatives. That makes all the sense in the world to me. That I don't think you need to be a rocket surgeon to understand when they're putting stuff. You don't in food need to be able to, to do it. surgery on rockets to understand that you're absolutely you don't need, right. You don't need to be a rocket surgeon to understand that when they're putting things in food to make them last longer. Specifically, it's harder for your body to break them down. It's harder right. for your body when, with all of the preservatives. It's like they're dipping our food in, in like lacquer. It's like they're dipping our food in the stuff that like keeps you know, uh, you know, outdoor uh, decks sturdy longer. So I get that. That makes all the sense in the world to me. Some of the GMO stuff I think is a little overrated. It's a little fear mongering. You know, the stuff where, like, you know, a GMO could be a seedless grape. Uh, you know, so it's, like, not at all of it's crazy. But a lot of it is really bad. So, I, I don't know, man. 
I mean, so, I mean, are you going to eat, like, are you going to run an organic cricket farm? I'm not. <laughs> but I would, are, are I would, you, gonna... hope, you know what, you're, you know, I guess, I guess to your point, like, it's, yeah, it's probably going to be more, like, you know me, like, I liked, if I'm going to, like, eat meat, I want some, like, you know, some grass-fed, free range shit like that like i like bison and i like venison you don't I like, really even I, you really don't even eat meat you eat organs i do i do eat liver i did eat a whole fucking mess of meat the other night and i was full until like two o'clock three o'clock the next day <laughs> but uh yeah it's the fact that there's gonna be like bullshit put in it is is what i'm gonna go with we need some free range grass-fed organic ass crickets but I yeah I have a feeling they're gonna probably be building them in test tubes and shit like that and that I I, I don't fuck with like I, I don't like that you know what I mean like all this incredible burger stuff and like unbelievable food like these meat alternatives I things. fuck with that less than I fuck with like uh, cricket yeah it turns out that stuff is horrible for you it's just like salt sludge it's like the worst stuff on earth for you it, it was. Again, you know, you, you could call this capitalism, I guess, but it's really the government that's doing it. So it's like this weird pseudo corporate fascism where they were just like, dude, we have so much of this waste. We have so much of this organic waste from creating, you know, foods. Why don't we just put it together and throw like a little meat uh, flavoring on it? We're going to call it Unbeliever Burger. And it's like you got these these people who are vegans out there thinking they're being healthy as hell and they're just eating like the 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 – the vegetable equivalent of toxic waste, man. Yeah, yeah. facts. So yeah, I think I, I think it's it's definitely a slippery it's definitely a slippery slope with the bugs being put in our food. Um, I don't know. You, hey, but look, if, man, you but if hey, if I was if I could if I had some sort of guarantee like that, it was just going to be like you know some found crickets that are going to be you know washed and ground up and put into your into stuff healthy. Good for you. Yeah, all right, bro. I feel you, and I think that I believe you because I know you, but I also feel like... You know I know my if shit. You, if me and you were out at a restaurant and there was a cockroach in your salad, I think you'd send it back. I, yeah, I wouldn't want some fucking New York City <laughs> cockroach in my food. But if, 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 think- if cockroach was on the menu and they had it was a delicacy... <laughs> and you know we were somewhere. I would probably munch some of those cockroaches. You know, you don't, you don't want cockroaches raw cockroaches. Sound so good. Are they talking about putting cockroaches in our food? Oh nah. yeah, oh yeah. Cockroaches, crickets, mealworms. Yeah, you. I'm gonna have to look talk- up the. I think you're bullshit. I'm gonna have to look up the nutrition nutrition value I'm on cockroaches. You, they're gonna grind them up. Madeline Lopez says that's cap. Steve Christopher says fuck eating bugs. No way. Ace Finn, I stick with mostly chicken, turkey, and fish. No bugs yet. Grind it yeah, up. Yeah, you know what? You're almost there. Sense. Chicken, turkey, fish, that's all healthy proteins. Bugs, another one. That's another healthy protein. I'm not – see, I'm not mad at it from that standpoint. But I see what you're saying. It's slippery slope. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we have a stigma over here. Like, we don't – you know, we don't fuck with that. But, like, Asian country – our friend Ong t- said he – when he was at – he would, like, go out and they would – forage and get all the crickets and like i don't know grasshoppers and a bunch of stuff he, he grew up in burma and he'd bring it home and his, they they his grandmother would cook it into like delicious food hey you know what there, there's a massive cultural aspect of it i'm mature enough to know that i'm probably too far gone man i'm probably too far gone you know um you know there, there's people that you know, I've pet pigs on a farm and I've pet cows on a farm and they're like really nice. They're like, they're attentive. They, they come to you when you call them. They, they, I, yeah, you I never get, see no like, bacon you don't like, right? That's what I'm saying. Like I get, I pigs get eat their own shit, no vegetarian, but I've pigs also eat their own bacon. shit. Pigs eat their own shit. They don't have, they don't sweat. Uh, so they keep all that stuff inside. You know what I mean? Like, Ugh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, I don't really dig on, uh, I don't dig on swine pork yeah, too much. You're a Muslim. You don't dig on swine, bro. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Pigs are disgusting yeah. animal. The, the, pig, the pigs are a disgusting animal, my brother. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it sure is delicious. I tell you what. It sure is. Fucking hell. You know? 
But I mean, like they, they say a uh, dog tastes like pig. And I, I just, my God, if somebody killed a dog to eat it, I, I'd lose my mind. I like dogs. All right. I like All right. All right. I love dogs so much. Yeah. But if you were, if we were over in, I don't know, some Eastern Asian country and there was some already dead dog on the menu. Eh, no. Not touching it? No. Nah. No, no, probably not. No, I don't. I, but again, I think I'm too far gone. I think I'm. Too You'd far have a gone, piece. Man. I don't think I would. I really, really? you'd be like, no, I'm not eating Lassie. It's only you're only saying this because you've never seen me turn down a bite of food ever. So, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't how I feel like we were together. Food. You'd have a little bite of that dog. You'd like. Bless yourself, you genuflect a little, you know what I mean? And I, and I don't think I need you, the cockroach either, I, you know? Yeah. All right. Chicken parm, bro. Well, you know, chicken parm. They really want to get rid of the cows is what they want. They want to get rid of the cows. They want They want beef gone, you know, and they're going to replace it with bug protein. And uh, they're going to win. They're going to do it because, you know, these people never stop, Mickey. They don't stop until they're stopped, and we don't have the willpower to stop them. So enjoy your yeah. enjoy your last few days of not eating real uh, meat. Bug protein. By the way, how they're going to market it is it, is they're going to start using the term animal protein. So you're going to start seeing the term made with animal protein. So the next time you get a protein bar, it's going to say made with real animal protein. And that's bug, baby. That's bug. Yeah. Cricket flour coming your way. Speaking of cricket flour and speaking of the New World Order, Jordan Hernandez says he would pay to see an Andrew Tate, Gerard Michaels sit down about the NWO. <sighs> I have very mixed feelings about it. Does, does homeboy Tate know about the NWO? Yeah, he talks about it all the time. Probably the really? things I like about him most are how he calls out the globalist bullshit. And he sees it for what it is. I, I think Andrew Tate, and you're 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 in that – business so you know people who know him so you kind of know this i think what bothers me a little bit about andrew tate is i think the whole thing's a work and i can't tell what he really believes and what he doesn't especially now that he's selling an mlm the guy's selling a pyramid scheme now to all these chads so oh really what's that what's what's he selling just a pyramid scheme he's he's he's, he's getting in on uh you know I, I believe it's supplements a whole bunch of other things but all these guys look up to him and you know, the Rolo Tomasis and the fresh and fits of the world is like, these are the guys tough enough to, like, say, be a real man. And, that, like, being a real man is, you know, what? what? What is being a real man these days? I like that they have their voice, and I like that they're not cowardly to speak up to, to the, you know, the agenda of, you know, kind of this, what do they call it? Biden's uh, office calls it the liberal world order. They stand up to that, which I like. But a lot of the other stuff is like, it's a pendulum swinging too far in the other direction where it's like, all right, you know, I hate communists and Nazis hate communists. So the Nazis must be the good guys. Let's not do that. Let's learn from that mistake, you know? Right. But I guess that's a long way to say, I don't know who Andrew Tate is. I think Cobra Tate is a work. I think it's a gimmick. I think he's a heel. I don't, I don't, I don't get that. That's authentically him. Your Tate. What's your, so when I first saw him, I, I was like, oh, this is this dude's just talking like outrageous. You know what I mean? Like he's he was being over the top. He's talking about just, you know, like super like, you know, like uh misogynist, just like over the top, over the top. Um but after watching like I, I but here's the thing, I've also and, and he is, I think he's a caricature. I think he's he's turned his like little beliefs up to like a, a 15. You know what I mean? Like he's he he's like he's a caricature of himself. Like he's not real. Like he's not like that's not exactly what he thinks. I've heard him say some things that like I could actually fuck with. Like where he was like someone's like like so how do I get a six pack like real quick? And he's like, why does that have to be quick? Why does it have to be like immediate? Anything that's worth it is yeah. through hard work and through suffering and through blah 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 blah. And like do that. I'm like, yo, he's like. He's got a point and he's actually talking some real shit. But then you hear some of the other stuff that he says and it's like, I think he's just saying some bullshit to go viral. 
You know what I mean? Where yeah, like I do. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess that's, I guess deciphering what he's saying that's real from what he's saying that's bullshit is kind of like what I'm saying. I'd, I'd love to have him on. Love to have a conversation with. The other thing I'd love about it is he bullies everybody he's on with. Like he straight up bullies them. You know, and I, I don't I don't think he's gonna do that with me and you. Um you know, so you know, he's great on Portnoy. Portnoy's taking a love. You know, he was great on Portnoy. Tom Segura and his wife talked about you know how uh Tom, you know, when the men are talking, ask the women to be quiet. And Tom Segura's wife's like losing his mind. And Tom Segura's like, I know, I tell her this all the time. <laughs> So that was where I was first introduced. You, me, and uh, Nancy were. She showed us him. That's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I thought he was just like a fucking asshole when I saw that. Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, this dude's no, just it's like a fucking hard douche. To, uh, justify. Yeah. How was um, he as a fighter? You watched any of his kickbox? How would you say Andrew Tate is as a? Fighter? I don't know. Apparently, I, I saw his Instagram. He's a, a four-time world champ. So, you know, yeah. I don't know the. There's 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 levels to different champs. Like you could win a, a a regional thing and be a champ. I'd have we'd have to look into that. So I can't really speak on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if those are big organizations, then that's that's super. You know that's 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 big. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I don't know what what he's a four time champ of. We have yeah. to, who, I mean, who I, we I, know I, that knew him. Linton Linton knew him, right? So he's a yeah, nice yeah. Guy. Uh, we, we were supposed to have Linton on to talk about it. You know, we were supposed to have Linton on to talk about it. Well, hopefully, we will soon because he's got a big fight coming up. The Swarm is uh, up to number two in Bellator, right? It's number two heavyweight. And he's fighting for the belt, no? He's fighting for the belt? Supposed Dude, to be. that last fight was unbelievable. That last fight, he, I thought he was out. I thought, like, if, if it was boxing, he got up at the nine and a half count. He got up at nine and a half, man. Came back, and that was some win. That's where you see what a real fighter, where what a real fighter is when he's hurt, and then he gets to, you get to see him respond. That's that, and we got to see Linton Linton Vass is a bad motherfucker. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It's crazy, like with it's so much of it is the referee's dis discretion. You know, I was I actually was watching Jack Congo last night get knocked out four times. The referee kept it going, and he throws the greatest right hand of all. Hell, well, Pat Barry, one of the craziest Pat things Barry. ever, because because the ref gave him a shot. That was insane. That was pure insanity. The Pat, yeah. like poor Pat Barry, like that's that. How do you how do you snatch defeat from the from the jaws of victory, man? He's just trying to like try stay down, damn it, stay down. Yeah. Shit. Then you just caught you get caught on the button, man. It was just a little short check right to it. Didn't even seem like a big shot. Yeah, yeah, just hit, hit him in the right spot. That's it, man. I mean, how, how much of that do you guys, when you guys train MMA, right? When you guys are training striking, are there like certain spots that you're trying to hit? Or is it just like, is it kind of like a luck in the moment thing? Or they, do you know that there's places on, on the human body that like, it'll shut people off? Yes, there there are. and But it's like, it's hard to train it because you're not trying to knock your partners out when you, when in training or else, you know mm. what I mean? Like. You, you can't be knocking people out all the time, but there's there's definitely spots that are like susceptible. Like any a lot of a lot of like if you can like even go like across like they always say the chin is like that's probably the magic button so to speak spot. Yeah, because if you if feel you can, it here, you can actually you can just, feel your your equilibrium a little bit. You can you can yeah, hear but your like, ear pop it, a little. Can, bit. I could go up and just go like this hard, and probably if someone like wasn't looking and probably drop them just because. If you touch on the spot, it just rattles the brain enough and you'll like lose your shit and fall, you know? Mm. So a lot of those, even like those glancing shots kind of across here can do it. You know what I mean? So like, that's why when you punch, if you could like kind of just snap it, boom, boom, and like kind of just rock that, the head like that, mm. you'd be good. That's why you should aim for the neck a lot. Cause a lot of times people have their head down. If you aim it for the neck, you can catch the chin. Um, temples are good spots kind of anywhere along like, Mirrors all the uh, the cameras all think so I, I can't even like show it proper but uh, <laughs> is it this way? Nope, wrong side. Yeah, all around here. <laughs> the temple's good. You could just schwack any of that stuff. Um, you know that. What makes a chin, stuff. Mick? Like, literally, I know people who would let's see who can hit a guy in the bar the softest and knock him out. Mm. Because like well, you, could, well, that's that. That's, 
That's my it's next bullshit. Question. Like, what it's, makes like, it... it's a sucker punch, and it's it's not nice. It's it's very fucked up and wrong. But like you, you can just go up and be like, <laughs> "Ting," and like if you hit, if you they'll they'll go down because you know just yeah. the human body. The human body it takes that that shot, and it's like, all right, save resources, sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, all right, we're under attack. Yeah, what do you think about that's resources. that Bruce Lee one inch punch, right? That Bruce Lee one inch punch. Yeah, kinda. Yeah. Uh, which what, you think is bullshit or what? No, no. I just I, I think it's a little different. Like that is to I think that's just trying to generate power in that small amount of thing. Mm-hmm. Where yes, it could you know work it it could work to this thing too. I'm talking about douchebags uh, snuffing people at yeah. bars. You know what I mean? Where they're is not it, trying to do it hard to and knock the guy ten inches. Like, let me say again. Is there a way to work on your chin, or are you just like kind of like born with it? Some guys can just take a punishment, and other guys can't. I think it's uh, I think it's it's there's a little bit of both. They say uh, a strong neck can can help prevent that, but you can't like condition your head, so to speak. I think actually, I think you can a little a little bit like where you can get like used used to almost like getting hit with blows and learn how to like move with blows. But like, if you're just going to like, if, if I just stood there, my, like was just standing there, a girl could come up behind me and just like, and, you know what I mean? It hit me in the right spot and probably like, like put me down. Like, it's just he, like just the way that our human body is like the weaknesses of it. Um, but yeah, if you have a strong neck and like, if you're in combat, it's different. Like, People who like don't fight and don't aren't used to like taking shots and know like what it feels like, like they'd get hit and they'd go into like freak out mode. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. yeah, like just yeah, like if you start like hitting someone with concussive blows and they're not used to like being under fire, like they're you know they're probably just gonna. That's why that's why it's funny. Like they like how I love that statistic where they're like the average male is fourteen thousand times less effective in a fight than they think they would be. 14,000 times? Yeah, 14,000 times less effective. The because they don't because they watch they watch movies and they watch fighters and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, I could do that." But they don't actually ever yeah. do it. So it's like then they're in that situation they're like, "Yeah, I'll probably just head kick that guy and I'll fucking overhand right that guy, knock him out, knock this guy." You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they get in a fight and they're like, eh. <laughs> and, and, and yeah. you know what I mean? And if the guy well, who's across from those out of fight you know who's talked about this? Jocko Wilnick's talk about this with Rogan, where he's like, all these people in the world, they want to talk about, uh, you know, how many guns they own. And like, ah, you know, th- these people have guns. And they're like, yeah, but are they doing tactical training? Are they are they doing shooting on the on the while moving training? Are they doing reloading training? If they're not training with the guns, what's the point of having them? Because you're going to – is the idea that you're going to, you know, when the feds come to your door, you're going to hold them off somehow? The feds train every day. Are you training? So it's like – yeah, kind of like similar in that regard where it's like, all right, well, you may have the attributes. You may be a big, tough bastard who's won a couple bar fights, but if you're going up against somebody who literally does this every day, you're going to be struggling, bro. You know? Yeah. That, but mean, that being said, yeah. what would happen in a, in a Cobra Tate Mickey golf fight? Uh, I mean, you know my answer, bro. No, what's your answer? He's he, not, This is very different than Bruce Lee because the dude's bigger than you. He's bigger than you. Not bigger than me. Cobra Tate's bigger than you. No, he's not. I think he is. Cobra, look, I Cobra think Tate, wrong. I think, is walk, six, I think you're six, wrong. 6'3", 225, I think he's walking around. Let's look it up. Um. All right. I'd whoop his ass. But uh, on the uh, <laughs> on the on the gun thing, um, I think yeah. it's easy to – it's uh, it's easier to point – I'm wrong. Squeeze. No, he's he's, uh, he's the exact same size as you. He's six one two hundred. I'm six three, like two hundred, and I do jujitsu. You think you're six three one ninety seven? That's true. That's true. Um, so, but like with the with the the gun thing, I've also had a friend who like does so. I because I'm uh you know. Open carry in Florida, open carry in Jersey now. You know, I'm I'm uh, in the process of doing like some of that tactical training and stuff. Um, yeah. So I can you know ha- you know ha- have my own, but uh, I know people 
who say they're like, yeah, like someone who's not trained is like they're more likely to hurt themselves with the gun than oh, one hundred percent. I don't totally Cheddar believe bomb. that. I think I think Cheddar that's bird. yeah, Cheddar Bomb. Well, yeah, Cheddar Bomb is a great example uh, from Eight Mile. But it, you know what I'm saying? Like realistically, like if you yeah, if you, if you know what I mean, if you have like trigger control and no, and if you take take your gun out and point, you're not gonna, you're probably not gonna hurt yourself. But again, under the like the stress, if people of the are running and the barrel starts working up towards them, not good. Yeah, well, they're dumb. This is the no no. I think dumb. I think very, very no dumb no people no. are definitely more. But dumb people never know they're dumb. Isn't that how it works? Yeah, yeah. They just vote. Yeah, yeah. That's dumb people never know they're dumb. It's very true. It's a very good yeah. point. So, uh, speaking of dumb people, don't know they're dumb. I thought the comment section in our Eva Lovia uh, video was a little was a little uh, unwarranted, man. I thought people really were giving Eva the business, and they didn't give uh, her perspective uh, enough of a chance, man. Did you read any of those comments? I did. I, I did. I saw some of them. Um, yeah, a very you have a very puritanical uh, comment section on your. <laughs> on your that was a little surprising to me. Uh, yeah, me too, man. Me too. I guess you know I've been I've been ripping on the woke for so long. I guess like you know everybody was like, well, you know he must be uh, he must be one of us. And I'm like, mm, I, I, I tend to agree with a lot of what Eva was saying. I I was all right with it. I just you know I, I maybe it's not a life for me, but I thought she made some really great points, man. And I you know I really don't like how people just dismiss. Yes, Maybe it was very dismissive uh, and just wrote her off like the whore, fucking porn star, and that was stupid. Because she actually, yeah, if you listen to the podcast, she had some really well thought out and like backed up information, and you know, she she was I was very impressed with uh with her brain and with you know her, her making her points and backing up what she's saying. Um, yeah, you know, and her confidence so, on top of it. She wasn't just smart; she was confident in her perspective. She's done uh, her research. She's done. She's, yes. She didn't come to this worldview like willy nilly. She's she's educated herself on on you know the things that she's passionate about. Yeah. So did uh people had the one I saw where they had a lot of problems with it when she was talking about like 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 sex doesn't just have to be about love like for females. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a lot of the issue people seem to have was like oh there's the there's a release of. I don't know if it's oxytocin or some sort of shit that makes them like fall in love with guys that they have sex with. Well, there is, there is, there is a and certain that's real. amount of, huh? And that's real. It is. There is. There, there's a certain amount of, especially the younger you are, right? Um, you know, this is the whole thing with the grooming and the pedophilia and all this other stuff. And like this argument that people are having on Twitter, uh, my cousin is is a, is a uh, psychologist, and he's he's been doing stuff for a long time. And he's been published, and he did a research on, um, you know, there was strippers, and then there was, um, you know, people who were were you know self described as homosexual, and blah blah blah. Anyway, long story short, the crossover between the two was that over ninety percent of them had had inappropriate sexual contact before the age of fourteen, um, normally by a family member. Strippers, I believe. He interviewed like 500 people who were or are strippers, and out of the 500, something like 480 of them um, had had been molested or abused on, on some level. Um, so there, there absolutely is something in the way that, you know, sex at an early age or sex before you're intellectually and emotionally ready for it can have lasting long-term effect on your self-worth, on how you, you, you view sex, on how you view your body, you know, how you, on your self-worth essentially, right? On your self-worth. But what I don't like in the opposite of that is putting your morality on somebody else. If somebody is an adult and if somebody is making their own decisions, I understand protecting children. I'm 100% on board with that. But if somebody is an adult and they want to be promiscuous or they want to be sexually active or they want to be, you know, uh, and, you know, and they know the risks involved with it and they, they, you know, and what, what's, 
who are you to judge them is basically where I come from in that regard, right? Especially when a lot of the guys were openly promiscuous and they're like, well, the man can't get pregnant. Like, that's that shit where it's like, all right, bro, you just, you know, you just, you're just looking for the cheat code, man. I, I, I'm sorry. you. That's not the way this world works. That's not the way this world works anymore. And I think that that's a good thing that progressives have done. Like, women should not be second-class citizens to men. Um which I really don't think is a controversial statement. Somebody in the comments is going to be like, oh, you're a cuck, you're this, you're that. Um, you know, and uh, not, you know, it's just, you there or no? Yeah. Mick? Just listen. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but at the same time, I totally get it too because if I was with a girl and I was falling in love with her and she told me, hey, back in the back in my 20s, I was getting DP'd every weekend. I'd be like, hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'd like to say I'm mature enough to be like, all right, well, that was then and this is now, but I don't think I would be. I don't, I don't know, but it's for them to live their life how they want to. You know, it's not for me to tell them how to live their life. And I, you know, and I really, I don't, and, and this goes into the Ruslan interview where people are, again, it's like, you know, who, who are you to tell other people what's right and what's wrong? Live your life how you see fit, you know? But the, the sitting in judgment over other people, especially when your side of the street isn't clean, that's when, you know, I personally would rather have dinner with Eva Lovia than 90% of the people in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? She's more interesting. She's more introspective. She's lived a life that's worth talking about. I can learn something about myself from her. I can't learn anything from you. I can't from these other people. I can't learn from reading the Bible or reading Salon or what. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's an individuality to her. She's had wins. She's had losses. And also, I love that what we've done with this podcast, not to kiss her own ass. I mean, how many podcasts in the world can say within their first five episodes they had a porn star and a preacher? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people want to act like, you know, we've got to be on one side or the other side. Nah, man. We're just here to, to understand and discuss life as a whole, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I hear you. I, I think, yeah, I, I think you, you can't, you can't re- totally fall. Like you, you have, you have a, a, a point arguments of, of her, you know what I mean? Like, or you might not be comfortable with a girl getting DP'd all the time. And I don't think she's, I don't think she's calling for that. I think she's just saying, like, what I saw from the what people seem to have an issue with versus what she was saying was like, was either sex is supposed to be for marriage, which mm-hmm. kind of seems like an archaic kind of thought. I mean, don't you want to, don't you want to, uh, you know, test drive the car before you buy it? Yep. You know what I mean? And you know, it's it's I don't know. It's just it's it's a different world, but. Uh, you know, it, it it seemed like a little bit of like kind of like old thinking. I, I thought in in those comments, if you know, just just referring to that, I thought it was a, uh, you know, kind of a. a pure well, again, I, I think that that's what, it. It kind of goes back to that that Cobra Tate thing, Mick. I think one of the real, real things we have to be careful about moving forward is the 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 progressive left has been so aggressive in their messaging of being like, everything old is wrong, everything Christian is wrong, everything that you know or you were brought up with, the culture you were brought up with is wrong and evil, that the pushback to that kind of like gaslighting and manipulation is going to be, well, then everything old must have been super right and everything, you know, all the old ways must be the right ways. You know, if the new ways are causing $5 gas and farmers to, to be shut down, then the old ways must have been right. We got to be very careful with that too, man. You know, this, this idea of binary thinking where it's one way or the other way, you know, because it's kind of that Hegelian dialectic, right? Like, you know, equal and opposites where, you know, one side pushes and the other side pushes back, you know, and that's, we don't want to go back to being, you know, kind of like repressive puritanical, like you, like you so, so ardently stated, you know, I, it, it just seems like, for whatever reason, libertarianism is just an impossibility. It's like people just can't let other people do their thing. They just can't live and let live. They have to be like, 
in control or sit in judgment of other people's lives. Um, and I, and speaking of that, I mean, I really enjoyed our conversation with Ruslan. I really enjoyed it. You know, but the yeah, what, what type of, what, like, where'd you get some heat from that? Well, I got heat. I got heat um, for, you know, attacking the church. And a lot of people wanted to defend the church. And it was just like, you know, a couple bad apples, a couple bad apples. Well, a couple bad apples isn't systemic pedophilia and covering up pedophilia for 60 years. That's not a couple bad apples. That's full on corruption, especially when you sit in judgment of how other people live their life. So you want to tell gay people that they're living their life incorrectly, you know, and gay people piss me off too, man. I, but you know, like I, we're driving through Indianapolis and they've, they've got well, like pride they flags up all over the place. So, huh? Like when they kiss you? No, that's when I like them. That's when that's <laughs> when they're showing love, Nick. You got you got you got a, a lot of you got a lot of stones making a homophobic comment when you sit half naked grabbing men from behind for five hours a day. I was just asking what we talk about. Huh? I was what just asking what about the modern about gay movement is that what pisses me off about the modern gay movement is they, they you know, that there's not, there's nothing American about them. They, they, they're like separatists. They don't fly the American flag. They fly their flag, you know, and, and they got every damn color in the rainbow. Except well, it's way prettier color. than the, 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 <laughs> I don't know. I'm what? trying to make it funny. What? I couldn't hear what you said. I said, well, it's way prettier. Their flag's way prettier. Their, their flag's way prettier, yeah. They got they got 95 colors, and none of them are red, white, and blue. It just pisses me off, man. It's like, you know, you, the separatist stuff on the left bothers me because you can leave. And I'm not one of these people that says, if you don't like it, leave. I'm one of these people that say, you hate it. Why aren't you leaving? Like, if everything in the world, if you hate everything about this place, why do you stay? Like, I just don't understand. Right. There's places out there that have the people world. People like to want. fucking bitch. People yeah, but the bitch. bitching, yeah. bitching has an effect, Mick. It's not just bitching, man. You know, like I was in, dude. I'm sitting there in freaking Indianapolis, and there's more people walking the streets of Indy than when we were in New York. There's more people in Indianapolis walking the streets, lively, having a good time. There's more bars open in Indianapolis right now than New York. New York's in trouble, man. Politics, man, it gets annoying, but it's more than gossip, and it's more than a team sport. It has real life consequences, dude. I mean, me and you, you know, we can't tell the world, but me and you have an opportunity to make some money. And we got to figure out how we're going to do it because of politics. We got to figure out a way around politics to go talk to people, you know, mm. like crazy. It has, you know, it has real world effect, you know, and I, I sit there and I look at, you know, Ruslan, who I enjoyed the conversation. His people are killing him for not giving me a harder time on pushback about the church, about, you know, the corruption in the church and stuff like that. They're like, well, we knew Gerard was gone, but what about you, Ruslan? And then he got shit for saying that gay people can be born gay. You know, that it's not a choice. All right. So again, man, my big so issue Christian is Christianity believes that being gay is a choice? Uh... There, there's so many different sects of Christianity. It's it's hard to believe, but yeah, the hard, the hardcore like fundamentalist Christians uh, believe it's like it, it's um it, you're living in sin and that it's a choice and that you know or even just even to say the way Ruslan said it was like listen, some people are born blind, some people are born so like being gay is a handicap. Like again, man, it's like that's where you lose me, dude. Like they just are the way that they are. Like, there's just, you know, and the fact that you're going to sit in judgment over somebody else, how they are, when you won't even clean up your own churches, that's that's where it gets me. That's where it gets yeah, me. Yeah, I feel you. I thought Ruslan was mad cool. Yeah, Ruslan was dope. And he's, and he's, he's very, very, very good uh, recording artist as well. You know, I mean, he's being known more for, for you know, um, being a preacher now. Um but he's a very good recording artist. He's he's very very talented. Yeah, I very check very, him very out. talented producer as well. Yeah, yeah I, gotta check I mean, him what, out. what was your what was your big takeaway from the uh, from the talk? What was your big takeaway? Did you did did you feel like you you had to question your your religious beliefs from that? Did you? 
No. Um, like I told you, like I, uh, like I, I admire and like, I'm almost like a little jealous of, uh, pe like people who ha who are very like staunch and very like, like believe big time believers. Like, I think it, it, it provides a sense of, uh, like security. I think it like, it get, you know what I mean? It's like, Oh, I, you know, I know I'm going to the, I know, you know, God's taking care of me, looking down on me and is going to, you know, I'm going to go to the afterlife and be in paradise and all that stuff. And my thing is, listen, anyone who tells me what happens when you die, if you haven't died, don't tell me what happens when you die. Cause you don't know. And it, and, and it, it's all, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's all pretty like, it all seems pretty like man-made. It all it seems like a lot of like ways of control. If you're good, in when you're alive, you get to get good things. When you die, it seems like it's a stick they're holding out that you know what I mean, just to keep people in line, kinda. Um, so, like I said, like I, but I, 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 you know, I grew up uh, like you, like you know, I, Roman Catholic. You know, we go to church, and you know, you're a kid, you believe that, just like you believe in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. You know. It's like, oh yeah, okay. The, that's what the adults are telling me. They know everything. Yeah, <laughs> but no I think adult like, never lie to me. Yeah, right. So that's what I think. I think <laughs> you know, I, I kind of like admire it, on, and I'm a, uh, you know, I I like I'd I'd like to I'd like to be able to find that like myself. Uh, but mm. you know, I'm I'm a uh, I'm 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 skeptical, and I, I you know I, I like to live my life like as realistic and you know, as, as real as I can. And I, I, I can't like just put a, like put blinders on and, you know, just, okay, I'm just going to believe and do this and that. Like, you know, so that, that's where I, where I'm at with it. I think, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of like, you know, really good people who are, are like involved in the church. And I think, you know, there's also some, some scumbags and stuff. So it's like, just like anything, I, I, I do kind of think there is, you know, the bad apple thing. There's some bad apples. I think, for the most part, it's it's meant to be good, uh, but you know you get a mixed bag. Do you, do you let uh, like religion affect the way that you live your life at all? I mean, it's really interesting going back to back episodes with Eva and Ruslan, seeing kind of two different uh, two people that I really really enjoyed speaking with, and two people that have like pretty disparate worldviews, right? So. Do you, do you do you let your religious upbringing like affect the way that you live your life at all? Do you think like before you do something like ah God's I mean, not like this? I should say first, like, I, I'm not like I was that religious growing up. Like we'd go to church an hour once a week for an hour, and it was one of the most boring parts of my week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I was, I was, yeah, oh, oh, like, dude, I know. Yeah. The second I got my confirmation, I was like, I don't have to go anymore, right? Like this is graduation for this nonsense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I uh, yeah, I would, I would spend, uh, I would, make, I would try and get at least two bathroom breaks in during it, and like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> try to, like get up and move. Like, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't a school guy. I didn't like being stuffed in a desk. I didn't like being sat in a pew. I didn't like any of that. Oh, shit. CCD was the worst, bro. Did you have? CCD? Yeah, and that was a combination of kind of a combination of both. But uh, you know, it was just yeah, it was just it was like more school. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I, I I think there's, you know, I think religion does point, and all the religions kind of have you know the Ten Commandments. I think that's an absolutely a way you should you should uh, live your life. I don't think you should over literal literalize it, like take it oh, too literally, where you can't even look at like another woman. You know what I mean? And yeah. that type of shit. Like, but yeah, you shouldn't steal. You shouldn't kill. You shouldn't, you know what I mean? Sure. Like there's a lot of like shit you, you, you shouldn't do. Um, but you know, I think like some of the, te the tenants are, are correct, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say I, I'm, I'm not doing it out of fear for the afterlife. I'd be doing it more of out of like just being like a good person and, because I think karma is like more like a real is a, a real thing that I probably I, I could probably almost subscribe to a little more. Yeah, yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I think I do think karma comes back around. Now, there are a lot of like very religious people in uh, in the fight world because the baseball world there was sure. like a ton of super religious people. Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. 
And, and like I said, like I, I, how do they, how do they justify being professionally violent when they're hyper religious? That's a good point, and uh, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna pull something up to, um, because I just read it this morning. One of my uh, favorite people in the world, uh, who you met, Impa, just had a beautiful oh, yeah. win this weekend. He's a freaking beast. He was in the UFC. Um, unfortunately, he was he was on the receiving end of that crazy back kick by the dude Buck, that dude Buckley, where a dude kicks him and he gets oh, knocked yeah. out. Impa's one of the kindest people you'll you'll ever meet. He's he's a very religious guy. Um, he's He's, he's a kind man. Like he's he's one of the strongest dudes I ever met. Absolute beast. Yeah, I rolled I rolled with him, but right. I don't know what that you did. I don't know. I don't know. But I saw him say like put some up at like all the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I cut them down. Like there's a lot of stuff where you can take from the Bible, and you know what I mean. Like I and and again, more thinking about it. Um, it's a fucking game. It's a game. A lot of men have uh, in, in this world today. We don't. There, a lot of men have the warrior gene in us. We have, you know, what I mean, we we have, but we like almost like, but, but what's if and and when you get when you get to have similar here circling back to to the Andrew Tate thing when you have something hard to do. In like you have a, a hard challenge, you have to go fight a killer. That can give you a lot of purpose, and that can, you can like. It, it's 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 like the best thing I, I've I've really ever known is like you know I, I get to go in there and and put you know my training up against like someone else's, and it's not so much in like I'm like wh where do you see, what's the error in what's wrong with you know like f like fighting like it's not like we're killing. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm going around and taking on a, a, Somebody a, a unexpecting person and just going to sucker bunch. Like we sign up for this. There's money on the line. We sign up. Uh, he signs a name to fight me. I sign my name to fight them. And we're going to meet on this date and we're going to do fucking combat. And it's, you know, it, it could be scary. It could be hard. The trainings, you know, it's, it's grueling. You're getting yourself exhausted. You're, you know, you're, you're fighting people every day. Like, it's it's a beautiful thing that when you go go through something tough and you know you can come you come out of that like victorious. It's a beautiful feeling. It's 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 great. And I think for what it does for you, for for us as like men and the way it builds our character and makes us confront reality and be realistic and be you know real and you know really par partake in in this time we have of being alive. Like it's a, it's it's a beautiful yeah. thing. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's an extreme existence, but it's, it's, it's awesome. Like, it's, it's not like, uh, you know, it's, it, to go back to like those times where you're, you know, fighting for your people and your tribe, like you're fighting for yourself and your family and putting, you know, want to put food on, on the table and, you know, you know, bring glory to you and yours. And a lot of the people do theirs and can easily justify it from, I want to bring glory to my God, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm just, dude, I'm just a, like you like to say, I'm a cynical comedian. Maybe I'm just jaded, dude. You know, I saw a lot of guys praise God after a home run. I've never heard anybody come back to the dugout and thank God after a strikeout. So I don't, I don't know. You know, I just, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I saw, I played with a lot of guys who would pray before every meal and then go out with a different girl after every game. So I don't, I don't know, man. Um, it, it, I, it's, for me, it's it's just I, a lot of it is cultural. I just think those guys are kind of posers. I don't know. If you're going to live that life, live that life. I don't live that life because it's not for me. I want to hang out with the honeys after the game. But I'm not sitting here telling everybody else how to live their life. You, know you want to go to hell, Gerard? To me, I guess that's the difference. You want to burn any internal damnation for eternity? <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, when I die, fuck it, I want to go to hell because I'm a piece of shit and it ain't hard to fucking tell. <laughs> It don't make sense <laughs> going to heaven with the Biggie said that. In white. I like black Tims and bled hoodies. Damn, are you saying Biggie's burning, bro? Fuck you. Oh! That a boy. Unbelievable. There's nobody out there like Biggie today, man. I was listening to Biggie. Never today. thought that's nobody what got you like canceled. Huh? Talking shit on Biggie. What'd you say? That's, that's a cancelable offense. 
Oh, I thought I thought you were saying God was going to give me cancer. I was like, I've been eating a lot of plastic, man. Let's not go there. <laughs> plastic. <laughs> Let's go. You're, see, you know, you'll never get this being fat, bro. But like, if I got cancer, I'd like one. I'd want to know, am I going to die? And if I was going to die, I'd be like, man, that sucks. But if I was like one of those cancers that was like curable, I'm be like, all right, I'm going to lose a lot of weight. Like, <laughs> this is. This is a good. The only two ways I'm ever going to get in shape at this point is 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 uh, cancer or prison, where like they'd have to lock me up and only feed me twice a day, like you know. Yeah, because AIDS is like pretty curable nowadays, so that's not a. Yeah, sure it's monkey. I think AIDS is just called monkeypox now. Is that right? I think I. Yeah, I think I'm hearing about this monkeypox thing. Um, yeah, it's monkey. I got, pox. Hey, I gotta go to. I gotta. I gotta use the restroom. Get by having gay sex, by the way. Monkeypox is gay sex. You know, I guess you're not allowed to say this. Is this somehow bigotry? But like 99 percent of all cases are sexually transmitted between gay men. So, so check this out. I have I have to use the restroom, Gerard. I have to use the restroom, but I have to use the restroom, and I'm sure you'll be uh, still answering this question when I get back. I'm gonna uh, Steve <laughs> Steve uh, he's, he's asked, taking a potty break in the middle of his own podcast. But he's listen, potty break Steve said, "Do you guys podcast. think?" Do you guys think the woke BS system is losing steam? And go. <laughs> I do. I do think it's losing steam, uh, but only because there are jokes that I've been telling lately that are really hitting uh, that a year ago wouldn't have hit. I, I, I think people are finally starting to understand um, that their voice is necessary and that they can only, quote, unquote, cancel you if you let them. You know, if you don't care, they have no power over any of us. The emperor has no clothes. Um, you know, I, I, I think when it comes to, to the woke BS, guys, you know, we like to talk about being the silent majority, but that's not okay. And we need to understand that's not okay. And we have to hold each other accountable because the silent majority is really a cowardly majority. Um we we have to we have to be more vocal. Our opinions are just as valid as theirs. Our beliefs are just as valid as theirs. And not only do we have to be more vocal, we have to we have to vote with our wallets. We have to make purchases specifically because of X Y Z. You know, if somebody had put some sort of political messaging on something that that you you normally consume, buy clothing or buy food or watch commercials. You need to email the company and be like, I just need to let you know, I eat your stuff all the time and I'm not doing it anymore because, you know, uh, you guys had this messaging on there that you guys had some sort of, you know, pro-Ukraine, anti, you know, pro-China messaging. So um, if you guys really want to see this world change, you got to understand that there's no such thing as a silent majority. Uh, there's only a cowardly majority. Uh, and whoever speaks the squeaky wheel gets the oil, you know. I mean, just remember, guys, all of Germany w weren't Nazis. It was less than 10% in 1930. Less than 10% of the population took over all of Europe and ruined how many millions of lives because of it. So we got to find our voice. You know, we got to find our voice. And, and understand this, something I've never struggled with, but apparently a lot of people do. It is your God-given right to be an asshole. You, you should want to be a nice person, but you by no means have to be a nice person. You can be a jerk to anyone at any time, although you shouldn't, but you should be a jerk to people who deserve it. People who deserve ridicule, you're not helping anybody. I made a trans joke on, I made a trans joke, I made a couple of them on uh, Thursday. At Nashville, specifically because the trans community got Dave Chappelle's show shut down. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, in solidarity with Chappelle, I'm going to make a couple jokes. And if anybody wants to Will Smith, come up on stage with me. Somebody wants to do that Will Smith shit with Chris Rock at five foot six, 110 pounds. I get it. Come up on stage when I'm up there, bring your Will Smith energy with me. You know what I'm saying? It hasn't happened yet, but I did get this lesbian couple after the show. Come on. Everybody's talking about how great of a show it was. How funny it was. Carol Ann Miljavik was amazing. It was a, the show had so much energy. This couple comes up and like scoffs at me and go, you should be ashamed of yourself. Haven't the trans community been through enough? Apparently not. 
because they want a lot of attention. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, to me, do whatever you want to do. Be trans, be this, be that. But you either got an Innie or an Audi at any given moment. So that's that's just the truth of the matter, you know. But that's it. That's where I'm at on that. Do I think they're losing steam? Yes. But I think that the wounded dog is the one that's most dangerous. I think that's the, they know that they they know that they're losing uh, public um, support, and that's when they start ushering in all of their their stuff. I mean, how much public support do they really need? Is there public support for five dollar gas? They don't care. They roll their eyes and say, "Hey, whatever, peasant, buy a buy an electric vehicle." Is there public support for shutting down farms? No, they're like, whatever, eat bugs. They don't care. They're going to have their world, whether we like it or not, and they're not going to stop unless we stop them. So that's my that's my soapbox as me right. back from the pisser. Well, yeah, um, that my plan worked perfectly. So so other than uh, traveling around doing shows on the road, uh, you've been uh, waxing some ass at Pickleball? Dude, let me ask you something. When when I first introduced you to pickleball, what were your thoughts? I thought it was a gay name, pickleball. I like pickles. <laughs> I was like, what what is what is pickleball? I didn't. It sounded dumb. Uh, <clears throat> but then when we played it, it was pretty fucking fun. Did you did you think it was gonna be like a national phenomenon? I have no idea what's happening, and I have no idea why it's happening. I went to play in Nashville. You know, obviously down by us in Florida, it's immensely popular. But there's like a lot of old people. Like I thought it was kind of like an old person's game, like bocce or whatever. I go on the courts in Nashville. I go on the courts in Nashville, Mick. Packed. Everybody thirty or younger. Packed. This is what I think. I think it's it's it. I think it's a e- it's it's like a it's it's an easy game to to make sense of. It's 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 uh like it's not that it's easy because there's there's levels to it. It's easy to go out there and ha- go have fun with it. There's levels to this stuff, Papa. Yeah, but but like it's easy to pick up, and you know anyone could have fun with it. You could have fun, you could be a kid, or you could be. There's a huge age range. If you're athletic and if you have like a tennis background, you could be freaking nasty with it. You know what I mean? So there's like. It's, you know, a- anyone could do it, and, and uh, I think o- almost anyone with even just a reasonable amount of athleticism could get good at it. Like, it's, I think it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's simply put, it's just fun. It's fun. It's easy. You're whacking a ball with a paddle over a net, uh, but it's easier than tennis. It's a smaller court. It's, uh, it's fun. You make some plays, you get, and, you and, know, you, get and it's co ed. It's co ed friendly. Like, there's a lot of games that just aren't co ed fl- friendly. If people want to play yeah. softball co-ed. It's insanity. Like it's in, like yeah. it's, it's nuts. People want to play yeah. like co-ed volleyball. No, no. Like we got smoked by by a fifty year old couple, and one of the you know it was a fifty year old dude and his wife smoked us one day because she was just nasty with the paddle, man. Like it, the, they're the both two tennis two players. Games, Ten- if you if you play tennis, yeah, you can pr- you can probably hop into pe- pickleball and be pretty nasty with it. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I think it's incredible, man. I love, I love that the game is gaining so much steam. You know, if you put me on a treadmill for ten minutes, it's nine and a half minutes of torture for me. But we can play pickleball for four hours, and it's no problem. You know, so I, it's love fun, it. I love it's it. I love it to death. We're, so yeah, where you off to next? Where are you now? Where are you off to next? I'm in Chicago right now. We played uh, eight games wow. yesterday. Went eight and zero oh on the courts at Horner Park. Uh, yeah, put it down. Uh, we're we're you and Carol Ann? at the Rose uh, at, at St. Ben, uh, at Zany's Rosemont Theater. Um, not the Rosemont uh, Theater, Zany's Comedy Club, Rosemont. Uh, Thursday night. Then I come back for a couple days, and uh, then I go up to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, Greenville, and then we got shows in Florida, man. Um, and soon to announce some stuff for me and you. Hopefully, as early as next week. So stay tuned for that, people. Awesome. Yeah, I've been back in Jersey. Uh, I got my my little brothers got some fights coming up uh, August 6th. So I've just been training them just day in and day out. Like I just came from the gym training LJ and Russ. LJ Raboli is making his – he's, he's 3-0. He's going to have his fourth pro fight. He's a beast, 6'3", 155-er. 
Maybe it'll be 145 or when he gets to the UFC. You never know. But either way, he's going to be a champ. Uh, my buddy Russ, Russ Corbel, the Corbelizer's got his first uh, pro fight coming up. Uh, that kid's a trip. He's awesome. Uh, and then Josh Ugaldi is fighting for an amateur belt. That's all on August 6th out in uh, Lake Harmony, Pennsylvania. So we, I've just been getting them right, just been in the gym with them like every day, just getting work, working on my own stuff a little bit, but also taking like taking it a little lighter because then I'm going to get back into camp and get another fight uh, myself soon. What do you think of uh, Nate, Di- Nate Diaz and Shima- Shimaev? Shimaev? How do you say that? That's I think it's Shimaev. Um, <clears throat> I think I think uh, it's it's a five round fight, which that aspect favors Nate. But uh, you know, Shimaev. Why is young- it a, I wanted to ask you about that. Why is it a five round fight if there's no belt? It's probably a main event. Or maybe if it isn't a main event, they probably just ro- could have just wrote it in that way. You you can decide how long you want the fights to be. I think so. I think the UFC can. But uh, yeah, Chimaev is hot right now. He's uh, he's you know he just came off a really close win with Gilbert Burns. Fight could have went either way, but by he showed in that fight that that was the best I ever saw Gilbert Burns fight. Gilbert Burns was incredible. Yeah, man, he's he's a great dude, very uh, very skilled fighter. You know, he's a real one, uh, no doubt. Uh, but Jemayev showed he could – a lot of his wins were, like, quick. Like, you know, he'd win in the first round, it'd be – and that's it. So we got to see – he got we, – we got to see him get tired and we got to see him push through and be a man and get, you know, get it done. Now – and that was a three-round fight. He did. He, he he pushed through and he he turned it on in the third round and and he you know he was there for it when he could have like you know some people could fold at that point. Um, he didn't, but it'll be interesting seeing him go against Nate in five rounds because that's to be that's ten extra minutes of fighting. So it'll it'll be interesting to see. Um, all everyone's Do you think like Nate has the wrestling that keeps him out of Huh? Do you think Nate has the wrestling to keep Chimaev off him? I think Nate Nate can strike. I don't know. Nate's, Nate's, Nate's wrestling is not on Chimaev's level. Nate's jiu-jitsu is better than Chimaev's jiu-jitsu. But, you know, I, Chimaev's big. He's he's young. He's hungry. Nate wants out of the UFC. Uh, he, you know, he, he, wants, he wants to go make money elsewhere. Kind of how we were talking about how they, you know, these Jake Pauls and this and that we were talking the other day about like the future of these sports. Like the game's obviously changed. Like there's, there's a change in this game. Like, you know, you could, you could maybe make more money fighting a YouTube celebrity than you could fighting in the best organization of fight of, you know, fighting in the world of the UFC. Well, um, let me ask you about that because my industry is changing too. I mean, for my whole life, in comedy, it's you got to get on Netflix. You got to get on Netflix. And Andrew Schultz says, "Why?" Andrew Schultz says, "I got millions of followers. I'm just going to sell it to them myself. Why am I even splitting it with these people who want to have creative control over? Like you wasn't with me shooting in the gym. You you don't you're not helping me in any way. I present this to you, and then you tell me what to cut, and then you take a cut of it. No, I'm just going to put it out how yeah. I want it, and I'm going to make the money. So the industry's got to be shook, like." For the industry has to want Andrew Schultz to fail so bad because Andrew Schultz' success will have everybody changing their ideas of, of how to do this forever, right? Like, I think it's a little bit of both. I think clubs. so. Here's the thing: we saw we saw in the past like Louis C.K. do his special for like five dollars. You buy it online, all the money goes to him. He put it on a site. Rogan did that because nobody would handle it though. That was different. Like no, he had no other options. I don't think you're right. I don't think that's true. This was before his, you know, whacking off thing. Is this it? is a long time ago. Okay. This is, I'm telling. I'm telling you. This is for sure. And uh, and then, you know, Netflix would give Dave Chappelle sixty million dollars to do a few, like specials, and uh, it was like, okay, yeah, obviously we'll go to Netflix. So I think if if the if they're not giving them the money to do it on one of these where it's worth it. Then yeah, they could do it their yeah. own route and could make that you know maybe not quite that type of money, but 
you know, can make something. Uh, you know, you got guys like Bill Burr who's doing all his specials with Netflix. They're obviously compensating him, taking care of him. Uh, Dave Chappelle, they're compensating him, taking care of him. But then there's other guys who like, you know, if so, you know, the way we'll translate this is like, you know, maybe, and this is an example you brought up, maybe like LeBron and Kevin Durant, you know, they could be getting paid this much by the NBA. They're well taken care of. But if they weren't like some UFC fighters aren't like, you, you know, Nate Diaz could call me and be like, Hey, uh, like when you're done with your UFC contract, don't resign. And let's go fight in the gym. Uh, no time limit for an hour. And, you yeah, know, bare and let's, let's sell, sell pay per view. And, you know, th- maybe, you, maybe you make more. You, you know, I don't know the, the numbers and shit like that, mm-hmm. but, you know, people like, J- like, you know, Jake Paul's making a lot of money because he's got a lot of followers and a lot of, you know, sure. YouTube. He's an influencer, whatever the fuck he is. And, you know, he's making money. Doing these boxing you think it's fights. A legit threat to the UFC. I mean, the UFC will always have a place, but like, I think, I think the it's... NBA. I think the NBA has a big problem on its hands, man, because you've got like six marketable stars. Really, that's it. And if those six decide, you know what? Why am I making thirty million to play a hundred games between eighty-two and the playoffs when we can go play a three-on-three pay-per-view and it'll be Michael Jordan's three? Versus LeBron James three, like LeBron James, an old head and a college kid, Michael Jordan, Kevin Durant and a college kid. Who's not going to watch that game for, you know, a hundred million dollars. So I don't know. I, I, I think, yeah, that, I think, I think professional you froze. sports, I, I think professional sports needs to be very careful, man. I think professional Jeez. sports needs to be very, very careful, you know, because there's, they're, they're, look, even with comedy clubs, like you take what Andrew Schultz did, and then you start to say to yourself, like, um, why do I even need a comedy club? You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't I just rent out a bar and bring in the people? Why am I giving the club 20% of the door? I'll just do it myself. Isn't like, that what Doug really Stanhope do? does? It, it's exactly what Doug Stanhope does. It's exactly what Doug Stanhope does. You know, so I think I think it, I think it's not like one is gonna go and the other's gonna stay. I think they're just gonna both are gonna exist and both are gonna have more power to continue to exist through UFC's social media and stuff. They're gonna still have a a stronghold in the game. There's through. prestige. There's there's no doubt about it. There's a certain amount of prestige standing on stage at Zanies. There's a certain amount of prestige standing in the UFC octagon. There's a certain amount of like like realness to it. It's almost like a stamp. Like, all right, this dude's the real deal, you know, but when it comes to money, it's hard to argue with the Andrew Schultz and the, and the, and and the, uh, you know, it's hard to argue, you know, with, I I think I heard Ben Askren say that, you know, getting knocked out by uh, Jake Paul made more money than every other fight he was ever been in combined. Is that right? That's tough. That's what I believe. That's what he said. That's tough, man. That, that, he, has, he needs a better manager. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I tell you what, though, man. You know, if uh, we we got it, we got to get the we got to do. How about this? What if we did a Mickey Gall Cobra Tate fight and then a podcast right after the fight? Immediately after the fight, you guys got to sit down the podcast. I'm down. <laughs> Put me in for that. But it's. it's uh, it's got to be MMA, or are you going to go into kickboxing with him? MMA, real fight, real fight. Uh, no, no holds barred. No holds barred. Real fight. Yeah. What do you think of this bare knuckle stuff? You think this bare knuckle stuff has a chance, or is it a gimmick? I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I, I, I'd like to see some bare knuckle uh, full MMA fights too, but bare knuckles. Uh, Bare knuckle boxing is cool. It's like it's old school. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 cool. Yeah, I, I fuck with it. I fuck with all Bare the combat. Might sports, help them man. In that, man. It's hard to it's hard to grapple in those gloves, man. Yeah, it's it's it's, e- it's easier with with just your hand working your shit for sure. Yeah, I tell you, I hope Nate Diaz does call you up. You and Nate Diaz would be a hell of a fight. 
you and Nate Diaz get in there and and, and do a little do a little shit talking. That'd be that'd be a okay. That'd be fun, right? Yeah, man. I, I wanted to see him right, fight man. Connor one more time. That trilogy would be cool. Yeah, I, I he he seems to not want to do it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Um, a lot of people seem to be trying to distance themselves from from Connor behind the scenes. I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about it, but uh, Dustin Poirier, um, you know, wants to distance himself from it. Uh, Dave Diaz seems to have no interest in it. I wonder what. I wonder what's going on. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know why. Mad people want to fight Connor. I think he might, we'll you, see. I think you, they're gonna have Poirier and huh? Did you want to fight Connor? Everyone wants to fight Connor, bro. You're so everyone wants to fight Connor. Everyone You're wants to like, fight Jake Paul. Everyone has wants Connor to fight. Fought anybody your size? No. Nah. Well, he fought Cowboy. I'm a little bigger than Cowboy, but. Cowboys was a 55er and then a 70. Yeah, no. He, he's, he's never – I don't think he's ever fought a, a true 70-pounder. Is the speed advantage going up in weight that much better than the strength advantage going down? Um, there's, there's, there's something to be said for both. It's, it, you got to take it on a case-to-case basis. But 170 and 155 are the best two divisions – 145 is, is, is third. And the reason being is because that's like the size of most like, like athletic, like males, like, you know what I mean? Like you, you'd be like, if you're, if you're 200 pound male, you fight out like 170. If you're 180 pound male, you fight at 155. And then, you know, if you're like a one, you know, 60, 170 pounder, you might fight at like 145. Um, so that you know, those are the those are the deepest and the like the the best three. I would say it goes fifty five and seventy is a toss up for number one, and then uh, three is is one forty five. I All think, right. but I think fifty five and seventy. I personally think the heavyweights are tanks. the best, but whatever. Well, I think heavyweights are uh, are the you. You can say heavyweights are definitely the baddest men on the planet because you got to assume with the you know the size and all that that they would if you're the heavyweight champion like Francis Ngannou you got you in a you know you got to say that that guy could beat any guy on the if you're the UFC heavyweight champion you that guy could beat up any guy on the planet you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember Frank Mir had a great quote about that where you know he he when he was like he lost to Lesnar. Um, and he was super depressed and then he woke up one day and he said, you know what? There's 8 billion people on earth and like 11 of them can beat me in a fight. I'm doing all right. Yeah. And he's right. It's true. Yeah, man. Well, Mickey G episode six in the books, man. I'm glad, uh, I, for all you people that stuck with it to the end, thanks for sticking through the technical difficulties. We did the best we could on the road here without a producer, just doing a little zoom for you to keep you guys in, in the loop. Um, we will we'll get an episode, another episode out to you guys next week. Uh, hopefully, well, you'll still be in Jersey next week, so we'll probably have to do a Zoom again next week. Yeah, maybe we'll do another another Zoom sometime this week. Maybe we'll do a couple of them, put like a nice little compilation together with some fucking wicked hot Sounds fire. Good. Wicked <clears throat> hot fire. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. All right, brother. All right. All right, man. Well, I'm going to go get ready to uh, eat some non-cricket food. I'm going to go do a little Brazilian radigio, get as much meat in my belly as I possibly can stand. Hey, enjoy it while you can, kid. <laughs> All right. For Slick Rick the Ruler, the master of punks, the slayer. Slick who? Punks, the uh, C. Huh? You said Slick Rick? <laughs> I said, oh, my bad. For Slick, on behalf of Slick Mick the Ruler, the master of punks. The Slayer of Sages, the King of the Octagon, the King of the Ring, the CEO of the RNC, Jersey Zone, Mickey Gall. I am Gerard Michaels. And episode six in the books. Peace.